Hi, and welcome to TFLP Microcasters. We're live here tonight. What is that sound? It sounds like there's a fan going. There we go. That sounds better. Um, that's worse. I don't know. Anyway, uh, welcome to Microcasters. Uh, I am here uh, tonight with uh, the regular cast. We've got uh, Christian and Anna. Hello. Good evening. Hello. <laughs> so we all loved Rob's uh, thumbnail, didn't didn't we, Christian? Yeah. It's like the most accurate thumbnail he's ever made. Usually, like mine are way better than the ones he makes, but this one was just like it was accurate. It was just two sausages hated out. So it should have been. So so tonight uh, we're going to be reviewing Hotlink, which I think is like the one and only Netflix figure that Anna's getting. Is that right? I mean, the last time we did a show together, we talked about a Netflix figure I have, the Mirage. Oh, oh I forgot you got the Mirage too. That's right. All right. It's okay to be wrong. So Snap. tonight we're talking about Hotlink and his friends Ketchup and Mustard. That's not their names. It should be. He's a sausage-themed transformer. One what? of them has yellow eyes, and the other one has red eyes. Obviously, obviously the plan was for them to be ketchup and mustard, but they whipped out on the name. Obviously. Listeners in the chat, if you've ever heard of a meat product called a hot lake, let us know. Uh, it's completely new to me, so every time I say it's nonsense. Oh, it's definitely real. <laughs> You've I shown think me it's more of a but, like. Is it well known? That's the question. It, it's more of a Saint Who Louis knows? thing, I think. Right. I am getting Megatron as well, Ron. It's true. I mean, three total Netflix figures. Well, three or seven, depending on how you look you at know, it. Okay, and you like Ultra Magnus, and it's on clearance <laughs> Not anyway. Not that one. That one's poop. And then yeah, Rodimus said, Rodimus said that he's heard of Hot Links. Damn. <laughs> one. <laughs> one is Infinity. That's that's not true. Uh, well, Lucas knows what Hot Links are. Anna knows what Hot Links are. And Rodimus knows what Hot Links are. And Christian doesn't. Majority. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Randall asked an important question: Which one, me or Christian, so, is the troll? <laughs> so, so Christian, the, what, um, the, troll? Yeah. the answer is Lucas. Ron, Ron was also asking like why we had uh, Skywarp on here. Uh, of course, I know you can't see the regular thing, but uh, yeah, we're doing Skywarp, right? Do you guys just want me to not be on the show anymore? I mean, that's totally fine. <laughs> Call him the two things he isn't. He's his own dude. It's Hot Link. He's in the very first episode. He just didn't have a name then. He's got a so name who, name is, name. who is Hot Link? Like, what does he do? He's part of, in the first episode, he's part of the welcoming committee that beats up on Wheeljack and Bumblebee on Cybertron. Does he do anything else? Has he been in a comic book or anything? Uh, he was in the BotCon 2013 comics, because that's when All his right. official toy came out. He doesn't that's where have... he also got his name. Thank you, Rodimus. In the Discord chat for this podcast, you can currently find a link to a link to an explanation of Hot Lakes on Wikipedia. Rodimus is right. There is a space between Hot and Link. In the sausage version. And I feel like you're going to have to start transposing the Discord chat into the Facebook chat so that we can see uh, the comments. Because I feel like you're, like, responding to comments and I have no idea what you're what you're actually talking about. Cause... That's okay, because these comments are fantastic. I There's a Wikipedia article about a type of sausage in our Discord chat. Yeah, there you go. So, <laughs> yeah, you want to check that out. community is. A joke because I, I wanted to make sure that you weren't just making stuff up, so I did read that article. Fantastic. Yeah, I mean... As long as you don't go to the Urban Dictionary, like, right? for, for Hot League, like, what, I don't know what that 
definition is, but that's probably not one you want to see. Like, like the problem for me is that I don't know what a hot link is other than a sausage. When I hear about that first, like, there isn't another thing that's a sky warp or another thing that's a thundercracker. Actually, there probably is another thing that's a thundercracker, but... Wait, what are you talking about? Another thing that's a thundercracker. Like, we're coming up on, like, it's like a month before 4th of July. Right, right. And you're like, I don't know what else is called a thundercracker. Like, I've never, ever heard any of those things called thundercrackers before. I don't know. I'm sure sure there's a, I'm sure there's fireworks called thundercrackers. I guarantee you. If I go to. I think you can call them that. I don't know. I get. I guarantee you, there's there's something like that. Something I do know that yeah. back around 2011 or so, some weird lady put out a petition to get the name changed because it was racist. For Thundercracker. Oh. Yeah. What? Uh, among, Fascinating. A whole bunch of names. No. She started with Thundercracker and then she expanded to like Inferno and Blitzwing. I can't. I can't remember anymore. There are a bunch of them. That were racist or offensive. Interesting. Before Karen were a thing, that was a Karen. But so, so the hot link, the previous hot links that have been released though, have been like straight purple though, right? Like, wasn't the? Yeah, I was gonna say you go to your wall of seekers, Christian, and I'll go to the wall of seekers. Pull, pull them down. So yeah, like in the in the G one episode where like all those seekers in the background. This is are the fighting. other uh, hot link toy. That's purple. super purple. Yeah, That's he's straight up very purple. Yeah, so let's just get around to this toy. So the gag is that I think there are certain people in this podcast who don't like it when I rename figures with much better names, such as Banana Storm. Um, and now Hot Link and his friends catch up with mustard. His nickname is <laughs> Sausage, right? Some people we don't like that stuff. Have the name of the, the Battle Masters yet. Their names are Heatstroke and Heartburn, for real, by the way. <laughs> yeah, and I think Harvard is just proof that everyone knows he's a sausage. I mean, I, I, I will say, like, the name Harvard, <laughs> Christian, I don't that's, know. Like... I mean, that's that's pretty close. Plus, you get heat stroke if you're out having hot dogs in the summer. So if you eat a hot link, you get heat stroke and heartburn, which is not great. So maybe. Maybe they know about the inside joke. Maybe. maybe the inside, inside joke is just me. I don't know if anybody else would... I actually, you know what, I'm just going to say it, and then we're going to change the subject, and we're going to talk about the toy, but when I first made the joke, I thought everyone would get it. I was like, oh, he's named after a sausage, that's weird, I'm just going to make this joke, and no one got it. It was good times. <laughs> yeah, I, I both looked at Anna like she was crazy. I, I didn't, okay, so I got the hot link one, that was fine. The ketchup and mustard ones were just a little bit over my head, because, it's a tad of a you scratch know, because just I, their visors. I, I honestly had not looked that closely at the at the Target Masters. Um, so, yeah, I did not realize they had a red and yellow visor. And then I also didn't, like, put two and two together that, oh, a red and yellow visor that you would think that's ketchup and mustard. So, yeah, that was that was too far for me. It's okay. So. It's okay. I understand. My humor is very well educated. So, moving forward... We have this Netflix figure, right? This is like the 57th time that we've gotten this Tetra Jet Seeker mold. Um, Christian actually has to count it. The 57th now. time? Five. I think it's like the 8th time. I think it's the 8th time. Yeah, 3 plus 3 plus 2. Yeah. Yeah, so we've mm-hmm. got a lot of this mold. We've talked about it before. I think we talked about the, um, we talked about the uh, uh, Rainmakers, right? Yeah, we talk yes. about Rainmakers. So, we talk about Rainmakers. so we're talking about it again. Now, what, what's nice about this figure is, you know, yes, again, it's the same mold we've gotten before. This is probably the best quality paint job we've gotten on this mold so far, though. So it's kind of like, if you want to talk about an actualization of a mold, again, like when we talk about Megatron and we talk about how much better he looks in that silver, um, we're kind of on the same page here where we have a mold that was okay, and it's painted up as good as it can be. 
yeah, the gradient work they've done here is really great. We talked about that a little bit last week with Mirage, uh, but it, it grades from black to purple and then purple back to black. And kind of right here, you can see it's a lighter purple, kind of pinkish on the edge of the wings. It's really nice looking. Yeah, it does have a really nice gradient. I don't see it as much on mine because I've got the, he's never going back in that mode again. But, um, you can see it on his back, like, yeah, as you can. Well, so. Oops. Either ketchup or mustard fell on the beagle. Oops. The other one fell back. To, to get them real fast. Yes, carry on. So here's, I guess I can do a vehicle mode comparison since I've got them both in vehicle mode. They're not the same purple. Not. I could definitely see why some people would want to cry and make this one be their sky warp because it's not the hot link purple, but well, it's also it's not the the purple is different from sky warp and yeah, it's not sky warp. I mean, I have I have I have the sky warp. I guess I was gonna show off, but like the the purple is it's a di definitely a different purple, but it's also interesting that that this one is is a lot of black, whereas the sky warp is. Um, you know, it's really more of a gray. Oh, gray. Yeah. Gray. Um, you know, so, but there's a lot of purple in it. but I think again, like, I think this is kind of how you do an exclusive, um, yeah. because the, like those other figures, uh, that came in straight blue and, and yellow and all that, like it, just the fact that they didn't have any paint on them except for the battle, battle damage, um, you know, I think it was kind of a detriment to them. Uh, whereas this one, it just like looks really great. So even though I kind of would have liked to have one that was just completely purple, um, like I actually prefer this one better just cause the paint is so, so amazing on it. Yeah. I don't know if we would necessarily feel that way if it weren't for the fact that all of the other seekers use the same paint mask. Sure enough. Like, the damage looks exactly the same on everyone because they keep using the same paint mask. So this is the only one that doesn't use that damage paint mask. It's true. So it's different, which means we would like it. I don't know if I would like it as much, you know, if it if the others weren't exactly the same. Yeah, and this guy, like, I think he's a better use of the mold because he can sell himself. Right? Like if if some random person who wants a new treats forward goes to the store and sees this on the shelf. They'll be like, hey, that looks pretty cool. But, like, I remember when we went out shopping on the holidays and we saw the Rainmakers pack on the shelf, my husband was like, why are they selling odd painted Transformers now? Who would buy this? You know, as a person who doesn't buy Transformers and doesn't know his wife had them. And <laughs> um, that's just, like, that's kind of the reaction, though, right? Like, those figures looked a step below normal and this figure looks premium so it can better better lure in new buyers and new people who don't know I'll, who he is although i will say okay so that seekers pack right was it was 80 dollars for three is that right yeah and so i mean this one's 40 dollars for one and i mean it comes with two target masters but it's still like a little more expensive so i could kind of see you know like like you gotta see the fact that if that pack would have been ninety dollars or something instead, and then they would have you know given a better paint decos. Like you know, I think that that I, I think the fact that they tried you know I don't know if they tried to make a price point. I have no idea, um, but you know, it was definitely you know did not seem like a premium exclusive. Whereas I, I agree with you. I feel like this one feels like a premium exclusive. It does. And, you know, one thing to kind of throw out there is that we are in an age where leaders, leader class figures, are Voyager class figures with accessories. And a lot of people complain about it. I like this better. Like, if my leader class figure is a Voyager class figure with little friends, even if it came with two MicroMasters, you know, like if the next sound wave was a Voyager that came with two cassettes that were MicroMasters, um, that would be cool too. I'd be totally fine with that. So, you know, I, I kind of like this packaging style of putting a nice large scale figure with two little guys to up the price instead of a large scale guy with accessories people may or may not like. 
but I like little guys, so. So, okay, so if your accessories have faces, essentially you're okay with it. But if they're just, like, if they were, if it was just <laughs> guns... And and they they didn't have faces, then you would be like, no, this is a problem. This oh, is absolutely. ridiculous. Whatever. But these are more but people. I actually agree with that. Yeah. These are individual toys. You can play with them on their own. Yeah. yeah. I threw Astro Train's crap in a box, and that that was it. Shockwave's crap is in the same box. I don't know. I mean, I still support. I used to mean shock lock. Shock lock. That's true. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I I still think that Astrotrain stuff was cool. Like, the Shockwave stuff was, like, extraneous, in my opinion, but I don't know. But nevertheless, yeah. like, uh, with, with this guy, I mean, this is our last version of the mold. And I know, Anna, you're always, you know, the one where you're like, oh, I kind of really just want to have one version of a mold and, and whatever. Are you somewhat disappointed that, like, the best paint decoed version of this mold came out last uh no because i've kind of cycled through like my red weed is still in package so if i wanted to sell him it would be pretty easy and i'd probably yeah. at least get my money back and my you know rainmakers are currently in their box they keep trying to come out but i just i look at them and i go why would i even want to display those so you know this could pretty easily just with two small cells be my only version of this mold. So it's kind of worked out for me just because I got rid of the mainline guy. You know, I got rid of my star screen pretty quick. I had a Skywarp for a minute, then Skywarp became made of gold, so I sold him. And now, you know, I have this guy and I think he's kind of an actualized version of the mold, so I'm cool with it. Because it's a new character, right? Because we're recycling new characters. If this was just well-painted star scream, I would definitely complain. <laughs> That's a that's a fair point. I mean, I think putting exclusives where they are, lesser known characters, I think that's way better of a strategy than, you know, nicely painting other things. Not not to say that the Megatron that is this guy's um, wave mate isn't great because he is, but I'd rather have newer characters that haven't had as many toys. I mean, this is the only Hot Link toy that existed previous, and it's seven years old and was exclusive then. So, I, I think it's good that we're getting another one. Now, if they want to give me Bitstream as well, I'd be very happy. Wave 2, Bitstream, make it happen. Bitstream yeah. is the one. I'm, I'm really curious whether or not we are get uh, more versions of this mold, or are we done at this point? Like, yeah, Are they going to be on the new I Seekers? You, you mentioned that this is the last version of the mold. There's no way to know that. I, I don't think that. it is. I, if the... If the show takes off and they keep doing it, I think we'll probably get another couple Seekers, two or three. Like, like I just mentioned, Bitstream is a good candidate. Sunstorm is probably a good candidate. The welcoming committee, not Sunstorm, but Yellow Guy, probably a good candidate. So, yeah, if they keep the setting on Cybertron, I think we'll, we'll see another one or two of these. But if they don't, then we'll see more Earthrise ones. Either way, I'll be happy. Honestly, if there's more waves coming, I could really see a Starscream just because he'll probably show up in this body in the show. And he's probably not really on shelves yeah. anymore being a year old figure. Well, but then there's Earthrise Starscream. So I don't know. I can't remember from the uh, trailer. Did they show Starscream off in that? think so yes, I yes? okay I, I was it the was it the combined i don't know it, it's been too long since i've seen the trailer but i can't remember did they show his earthrise mode or the tetra jet mode i'm pretty sure he was tetra moded when he was in that council scene where you saw jetfire and megatron together okay so yeah i can see that so then i mean I'm pointing out being wrong but i think that's right i mean the only thing i could kind of see is is the fact that we already have a star scream that is that on the shelves like the Earthrise one? I, I could see them not doing that, but then, I mean, who knows? Like, maybe whatever the next, you know, that, that'll that go away. Um, I mean, I'm sure that they'll probably reissue Starscream later on down, down the line, like in the fall, just because they probably like having Starscream on the shelf, but I guess we'll see. Yeah, they, they may duplicate that strategy with Megatron because we have the Netflix Megatron out right now, but it's not sharing space with... The Earthrise Megatron, because that's not out yet. Right. That's a good point. 
stick a point to them on the shelf at the same time might be a clog. Um, yeah, the last thing the about the cannibalize their own lines. Just to go back to the deco of this figure, the something that Ron mentioned and maybe a couple other people mentioned was the orange accents on this guy are actually pretty cool. Mm. Yes. Like he has just a couple orange accents, right? Just I wish they were more visible. Wings and some orange yeah, here. The, the underside of the wings. Like if it was the top of the fin here, I think that'd be nice. Or the wing tips, that'd be great too. It's nice. I like orange on figures. He could hang out with um, New Soundwave to make a Halloween set, so that makes me happy. Mm. Nice orange I, accent. I think I do have an issue with this deco and that it's very monochromatic. And the other ones were you know, not better. Just this is two colors, and I don't really like that. Yeah, but, I mean, you have the, whatever, the one piece that's kind of orange as well that breaks it up. It does so, break it up. Yeah. I don't, I yeah. don't think I mean, it's too bad. It's a very boring color scheme, but that's okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it's better than the other ones. Just, I don't like it. That's a personal thing for me. Right. And, and I think, again... Quickly... Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, like, that's probably the reason why they put all that battle damage on the other ones, too, is because if you didn't have that on there, like, there, it would just be all, like, one solid color. Yep, all one color. Uh, Christian, is he part of a team with Bitstream and Nacelle? Nacelle? He's <laughs> part of a team with Bit, Bitstream and Sunstorm. Okay. Catherine was asking in the chat, so I wanted to. Yeah. He's part check of the that. welcoming committee team. I don't believe that that yellow dude that is Sunstorm is actually Sunstorm because he's a different dude and he's orange, so. Whatever. But yes, Bitstream and Hotlink go together. Sunstorm kind of goes with them. Nacelle is his own thing. Okay, got it. So, just to really quickly go over the figure as a figure, since we've already done it before, it's okay. Done. Like, it's an okay figure. Um, okay. It's alright. Like, as far as the robot mode, as long as you don't mind the fact that if you interrupt the leg sculpt by moving the leg outward, you start to realize how short his torso is and how long his legs are. Um, as long as you don't do that, it has a really nice robot, you know, body shape going. It looks good. The articulation is mostly all there. You know, this is before the current war on wrist articulation. He actually has wrist swivel. Um, he has ankle tilt or swivel or whatever we want to call it these days. He has bit. it, but it's not great. Um, it's just a little bit, it's still more than Shockwave had, but it's not, um, it's not perfect by any means. His head moves and tilts the way it should. The waist rotates, of course, not fully easily because he's got a backpack, but you know, he's got good articulation. This was kind of the beginning of when Siege told us, Hey, we can make a big, cool-looking robot and actually make it move. Check this out. So, you know, and he's solid, right? Like, that's something I always complain about. He doesn't yeah. have gaps where his wrists go. He doesn't have gaps where his feet go. He just is a solid robot. So that's really nice. Like, I think it's a robot mode, as long as you don't mind the waist-to-leg ratio being a little odd-looking. I think he's a really good robot. Well, that's one thing I wonder if the fact that they, you know, knew that they were going to make this mold like eight times, if they were able to make it a little bit more solid than right. some of the other ones. Because, I mean, I do agree with you, like, you know, when you complain about the fact that, like, a lot of the figures, like, that they're, the inside of the arms is uh, is hollow, and, and they very well easily could have made the back of these legs um, hollow, but they didn't. They put this little, you know, piece in here that springs springs back or whatever. And so I, I think that that's a really nice touch. And the fact that they just didn't make, you know, the like back of the legs hollow is nice. So. Yeah, it's a pretty good mold. The only thing that isn't good about him is the alt mode just has the legs hanging off. I, after transforming this version of the mold to his alt mode, I made the decision that I'm not going to put this figure in its alt mode anymore. Like, no matter how many versions of it I have, I'm done with it. That alt mode, I've gone back and forth. 
I thought it was terrible in pictures. Got it home with Starscream originally, kind of warmed up to it. Now I'm back to thinking, eh, that's just like, it's not quite good enough. You know, it's a touch jet with legs under it, but it's just kind of, it's not so great, especially when you consider how much more of a like complete form the new Seeker is. Yep. Definitely get these if you're a Battlestar Galactica fan, though. Yeah. I mean, I, I think of the Cybertronian modes that they had. Um, I actually prefer the Tetrajet. Like, I like this better than, like, Soundwave. Um, you know, I, just, I thought his yeah. his alt mode was not great. So, I actually don't mind. But I was going to go ahead and show off uh, Skywarp versus Hotlink to show the differences. And I definitely think, like, I think Hotlink looks a lot better, in my opinion, than, uh, than Skywarp. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to say just for if anyone is watching this and they haven't seen the figure otherwise, check them out in pictures with better lighting. Check them out at the store. Check them out in hand if you get them because our lighting is not doing him justice right now. Because when Lucas held those up and said that um, Hotlink looked better than Skywarp, it was like, oh, my God, he looks way worse than Skywarp just because of the darkness in our lighting. But in hand, he looks I really good. Here, you want me to turn some extra lights on? There we go. Look at that. Jeez. Look at this. It's like... We have the regular heat lamp world over there. There. Is this... Look at you, that. Is that now better? You can see, now you can see the different purples. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're quite different. Right, he's yeah. got a lot of... Like, it just feels like um, in hand and in the picture now that even though it's all gradient that Hotlink actually has a lot of different colors going on which makes him look nice really helps yeah I mean I think that like if they would have just released the thing in like straight purple like like if it would have been the same as those other uh, that seeker pack it would have or tetrajet pack or whatever I, I, I think that it just it wouldn't have been that great. I think that this is a lot great. nicer. No, this is cool. And they have all sorts of freedom with Hotlink, being that he doesn't really have any real media behind him. They can kind of make Hotlink whatever they want to. Yep, he's got one episode. They can they can change him. Yeah, lots of freedom with that. So, so we need to talk about his friends real quick. Did you want to say anything about the jet mode, either of you two? Christian's been holding it up off and on throughout the show. I mean, it, it's a Tetra Jet. I, I think it looks the nicest. Again, I mean, we've covered it's this before. Movie. The paint jobs on the Netflix figures are much, much nicer than the paint job. Like, I just... Yeah. Like, I wasn't... You know, I kind of defended the... Um, uh, the battle damage before, but then now when it came out with this stuff, I was like, oh, well, I guess I shouldn't have done that because this is so much nicer. It is nicer without it. I think battle damage is still an ongoing experiment. When we talk about Megatron, we'll talk about that. But I think that yep. it can be good. It's just... They're still trying things with that. Yeah, I think we can definitely say none of us like Space Mud very much. But this is better. Yeah, the new stuff is interesting. I'd still rather have just pure modes. No, no damage, whatever. But that's me. So, I had questions about not quite Sunstorm and Bitstream. Here they are. So if you, if you have yay. one of this really cool, this is a cool yellow. It's not quite Nova Storm color because Nova Storm is very ne yellow, very neon. This is kind of more muted. And then Bitstream is this kind of cool tealy blue. So I think that will translate well to a Tetra Jet. Yeah, they look yeah. nice. So, um, what was I about to say? I don't remember. I'm sorry. We're going to talk about heat stroke. The target, yeah, the target masters. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. I feel like I was going to see something else first, but who cares? Yes, They're let's talk about the target way. masters. So the same colors. Yeah, here's the thing. You get two of the same target master in the same colors with the same head and different colored visors. They're not left-right justified. They're exactly the same. They're, they're the same little twice. Left, right, just if I would have helped. It really would have. So, but, I, I may be crazy, but 
these are by far my favorite Target Masters. Like, I really like these. I love the colors on them. I don't, I don't know nice. what it is. Like, cool. I just, I think that they're really cool. So, like, for me, these do it for me more than, like, I don't know. I've been lukewarm on a lot of the Target Masters that they've released outside of, like, you know, the uh, the Pterodactyl one was cool. And the, um, what's the Smash, the the Hammer Smash one? Down. Smash Down or whatever. So, I like, I like those. But, like, most of the ones I just have not liked. But I actually really like the colors on these i mean even though you're right like they're the same it's the same mold but i don't know so you know it's funny is when i went to get these guys off the shelf i couldn't find them and i initially grabbed this guy because i was like ah blue target master and it's because there was a bold um is why i made that mistake initially blue pipes right uh, sure, yeah, I don't remember which one's which You're name. holding blue pipe, right as now. long as it's got the same cannon. Yeah, this is the same mold. Yeah. This is the same one. So, um, yeah, they're just two of that mold. It's a little bit of a bummer that there isn't a little bit of remolding or something to make them a little more unique. They are new characters, as Christian has said multiple times on the podcast, so that's kind of cool, because that just means, like, if they do show up in the show, they can do whatever they want with them, make them interesting make them condiments whatever it's they're kind of a free and open world to play with so that's cool but i'm just gonna say like a big deal with the target masters for me that have been released probably ever but especially in lg and in um siege slash earthrise slash whatever um has been that some of them put the peg on the front of the figure and some of them put the peg on the back of the figure. I know that variety is good. I know that accuracy is cool and all that good stuff. But really this design with the peg on the front of the figure on the chest in robot mode, it just isn't as good as the design with the peg on the back. And that's a bummer because I mean, yes, variety is good. Having at least two molds for the target masters is better than just one but man it just doesn't look as good to have the peg on the front like that it's obtrusive if it if they just put a hinge on it for it to go down into the figure that would fix it you know made it like a combiner port yep i know that would it's be not- an extra part blah 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 but I don't, I don't think it's quite as horrible as you think it is but i do think it's really obtrusive it really makes them hideous for me, but that's just, yeah. I just complain about it a little bit. But, but I think, again, I mean, that's what you just see the difference, like, with the Hasbro Target Masters. I mean, they're trying to make a price point. Like, these things, most of them are five bucks or whatever. So, it's right. like, it's, you know, for five, like, if they would have charged $10, which no one would have bought them at $10, well, I shouldn't say no one. There would be certain people that would buy them at $10, but most of them wouldn't. People wouldn't. I mean, I'm paying almost $10 per cassette to get the um, the Legend Scale ones. So, what do I know? <laughs> right. But most, most people, you know, buying these things for their kids at Walmart or whatever, or wherever they're at, Target, uh, are not going to spend $10 on, you know, a figure like that. No, they're going to see this at six bucks and be like, is that really worth six bucks? But ten would be way too much. Yeah. Yep. So as far as the set goes, I mean, if there's someone in your life who would be really irritated by you calling Transformers sausage, ketchup, and mustard, it's a must buy. Absolutely. I get a lot of pleasure from this figure just talking to Christian about it. The set, That's I mean true. to say. However, it's true. It's, been going also, it's good. Like there's not a there's not a bad toy in the box. Like this this whole chest peg situation could definitely be better, but that doesn't make it a bad target master. It just makes it the worser of the target masters. Um, and the hot link figure is it's fine. It's good. Yep. So I'm pretty warm yep. on this. It, it's another Tetra Jet. The paint is probably the best we've seen. I still prefer Red Wing's colors over, like, its plastic base colors. Uh, but, yeah, between the two premium ones, 
I think that's a good contest for who's better. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think this is the best one of the Tetrajet molds, personally. So if I were to only keep one, this would probably be number one. Red Wing would probably be number two. Um, so I think I'm kind of with you guys that if I had to sell, like, you know, for whatever reason, I'd probably be selling the main characters and keeping the the exclusives. So. That's fun stuff. But. But yeah, no, I mean, I, I definitely think it's nice to see this. And like, again, it, the fact that it's an exclusive with extra paint is is nice to, to see that. But the fact that they're not, I mean, they're charging more because they're throwing, you know, extra Target Masters uh, in the box. But, you know, I, I don't think it's really too bad um, comparative to, you know, what we got before. So it's a $30 Voyager normally this set is forty dollars to have two target masters in it i think that's a good price point yep so. yeah except really, if you're like me and you feel like you may have too many target masters now oh my gosh wow i have that, a lot that like, over is, the last that two years crazy. i went from like having a small spatter of target masters now i have like 50 i swear it's got an intense in here cool so. A lot of target mats. Just gonna get all of them because they're so cool. I even have those weird target roids. I just I love target masters. There, there you go. So you could just split off, sell the rest of your Transformers collection, and target you know, masters just keep, only. Just keep target masters. So. That's right. Did uh, I don't know if we answered uh, um, Randall's question. He was asking who you're getting rid of as far as he your... said. What area I'm getting rid of? I don't understand. Oh, the area? Oh, I thought he was which asking what figure. Cause... Or is it which are you getting rid of? Okay. Yeah, I that's probably what it is. Cry. Sorry. My brain was like, area, I don't understand. Or what he means, like, destroy part of the world or something. I don't get it. So I left for a second. Now I get it. Um, so, honestly, like, if I do decide not to keep the um, Rainmakers, I'm going to keep this guy. Um, I'm going to keep this guy for sure. I may or may not keep my Rainmakers and get the um, the, the sticker kit from um, Toy Hawks. I'm still thinking about it. And then Red Wing pretty much at this point is doomed. Like, I'm going to eventually just sell him. One of these days, I'm just going to be like, ooh, eBay, go Red Wing, bye. So it's definitely this one that's going to stick around. It's just because I didn't open him. It has nothing to do with is he better or worse. It's just he didn't get opened. It's just like that, um, that Headmaster RC that is totally fine. Never opened it, so it's definitely just going to get sold one day. I don't understand how you could do that. The Headmaster RC is so good. Like, I really like that mold in general, and, like, I just I just really dig that character, personally. I don't I don't know why you're so against it. It's better than the Nautica. It, it's not better than Nautica. It is better than it the is Nautica. Better. It's better than Nautica, I'll say, I'll say that. So. No. Well, the Nautica's head is terrible. So is the I, I feel like we need to get Don on the show, and you need to explain <laughs> to him about how you don't care about Headmaster RC, that you don't care enough that you've never taken it out of the box, and that you will eventually sell it, just to see Don's face to be like, you know. But see, I would tell him my actual feelings towards it if he would understand. Yes, yeah. I Boy. actually, I actually do care about a Headmaster RC. I just don't really think that's a great version of it. Okay. I agree with that. I agree with that. It's well, like, like it's like LG blur, then brain no brainstorm Nautica RC, uh, Titans Return blur. But luckily, later this year, there we're going to be able to do a show where I talk about like fifty RCs all at once, and just there say they're go. all garbage, and you should Oof. just draw a picture of them instead. Great. Well, you know what, and I think what you deserve is is that we'll release the RC and the Moon Racer mold, and then you can have <laughs> you can have that for disparaging Coming. Headmaster RC and, and saying that deserve, you don't like that Bob. That mold. Wow. That's what you deserve. <laughs> so, jeez, 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 that's terrible. Oh yeah, I forgot that the Ultra Magnus head came with that RC, right? It does. So, yeah, I did. I did. It's I, fine. Still don't, I still don't understand that, and I should have sold those stupid heads like 
back in the day. I don't know how much they're going for now, but it's like, what is the point of having a freaking Ultra Magnus head just by itself? But I don't know. Yeah. It was designed for another wave of, of uh, Titan Masters that never came. It was an interesting idea, it, even though it didn't really do much. It was interesting. So, anyway. All right. Um, well. Yeah, I guess that we all like this guy, so go out and, you know, order him from Walmart.com. I don't know if it's still... I don't think those are up anymore in Walmart, but there's, like, a zillion of them at Walmarts. If uh, I, I don't know if they're going to end up doing, like, a site-to-store where you can, like, you know, do the, you know, store pickup or what, but... Um, tomorrow night, Ouch My Wallet is uh, going to be on YouTube, 8.30... Uh, Central, 9.30 Eastern, uh, so check that out, and then also check out the TF Talk News, uh, and then also our lively discussion that we had last night on YouTube uh, uh, discussing Hasbro versus Takara, so you can check that out as well. So, And then also, if you want to debate some of these figures uh, as well, if you see this show later, come join us in the Discord chat uh, as well, and you can give us some of your thoughts on some of these figures. I'm always happy to tell you that those figures are bad, if they're bad. Oh, uh-oh. Rob's saying that uh -oh. Ouch is uh, iffy because he's not getting people. Okay. Well, well, guess, we'll, we'll, we'll see if we can uh, figure it out. I, I I probably have some stuff I could be Rob, so we'll, we'll figure it out. So if I not, Ouch will be next week. We'll, we'll find a way to rally this, up. Rob. We could buy some of it. Oh, jeez. So, anyway. So maybe we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> all yeah, right. We might all be there. <laughs> you never there you know. Go. We all have a new toys. <sighs> all right. Well, uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone in the chat. Uh, Randall, Ron, uh, Catherine. Uh, Rodimus yeah. in Discord. Rodimus in Discord. Rick with uh -huh. his flyby at the beginning. And uh, Rob, of course. So. Ron. Uh, Did you say Ron? I said Ron, yeah. So. Okay. All right. Trying to get everybody. Well, thanks, everyone, and we will see you later. Thank you. See ya.